Welcome back to California Cooking. We've got a great show lined up for you guys today, starting with a former professional basketball player who left his home country of France to open up a bakery here in Burbank. My visit to this French bakery got me thinking about a bistro style menu. So I'm gonna make a roasted chicken with some crispy potatoes. Plus, how about a wedge salad with homemade blue cheese dressing? And then our kitchen is finally complete. Theo and I are gonna give you a quick tour. Earlier this summer, Lou the French on the Block in Burbank was named the top spot to eat in LA and the Valley by Yelp. I got to visit this neighborhood bakery in Burbank and learn all about the owner's incredible story of success. Take a look. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Hi, Lou. How are you? I'm really good. Good. Lou the French on the block. What a cute name for a spot that makes the best croissants. The best, yeah. Right? I you say that. I mean, first of all, when you walk in this place, the smell is just intoxicating. It smells so yeah, good. There's a lot of butter here. There's a lot of yes. butter. You, I think, have the greatest story. You're tall, 6'6". Six, six. Yes. You were a basketball player in yes. France. Yes. What team did you play for? So I played for several teams. Okay. I played for Paris, Brest, uh, Epinal. I don't think we hear of many basketball players from France saying, hmm, I'm going to come to the U.S. and make croissants. Uh, I didn't hear uh, many basketball did players saying that. Did people think you were crazy? Um, I don't think they told me that I was, I was crazy, yeah. but I think the look on their face said everything, <laughs> you know. What was the look when you when you? I was like, <laughs> but now it's better though. Now the it's look better. Is better. They're like, yeah, you made it. Uh -huh. What was it in you that said, you know what, I think I can pull this off? Because now, can everyone in France make a good croissant? No. 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 It's no. a skill. I think you can make a croissant, but I don't think you can make a good croissant. A proper croissant. What should it taste like, look like? So it definitely needs to have the layers. Yes. That means the work was done right. It needs a quality butter, which is a French butter, quality flour, and you know, just the, we call it the savoir-faire, the, yes. the know-how. How did you, you know? get the know-how? Oh, YouTube. Ah! <laughs> no way! Yes. yes. YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. How many layers? Or can uh, you not disclose? Uh, too many. <laughs> too many layers. <laughs> but, but we spent three days to make the croissant. Really? Yeah, one, one like so. The first day we make the dough, yeah, and we let it rest for the next day, and um, the second day we put the butter inside and we right. do the folding, yeah. and we shape them, and we put them in a fridge, and the third day we proof them, which yeah. is the proofer, okay. and then we bake them. Oh so it takes three days to make a croissant. So no, I, not everyone wanna you know, take all that time no. to make croissant. Do you make different kinds of croissants? Like do you do the almond, the chocolate? Yes. Yes. You do. So we make chocolate croissant, regular croissant, which is my favorite, yes. the regular croissant, the almond croissant, and the almond chocolate croissant. Yes. And now a plain croissant, do you eat it with anything? Are you a purist plain? Are we plain, supposed I to mean, put anything on The plain on croissant it? is supposed to be eaten like that. There's butter. Some people would ask for butter and I'm like, no. They, no. I saw the butter that I put in it. Yeah, if you saw yeah. how much butter was in the croissant, yes. to put butter on it is yes. just... Um, the only thing that I do with the croissant is that I dip the croissant in my coffee. Do you? Yes. You dunk? Yes. yes, I do it, yeah. A basketball player who <laughs> dunks his croissant in coffee? Yes. Lou, you're going to show me how to make something. So I'm going to show you how to make the quiche. Uh, the quiche is a big deal for me because when I was playing basketball, I was living alone and I had to cook for myself. And the quiche was something that I mastered. You became a master <laughs> yes, of quiche. Yes, yes. I personally love quiche. I want to know your tricks. We have to start with the dough. Yeah. So we, have, we want to make our own dough. It's better because that's more of an authentic French right. uh, quiche. You have 500 of uh, flour. Uh -huh. Use the good flour. Okay, and when you say good flour, what do we mean? I would say organic flour. Ah, okay. 260 gram of butter. French butter. Not for this. Okay. 
For unsalted? the croissant, yes, 100%. Okay, so this could unsalted. be just your regular butter, but unsalted. Yes, yeah. we have two yolks, 110 gram of water, okay. and one pinch of uh, salt. Okay. So we have to put all the flour, the butter, the eggs, and the salt together. In the and, mixer. Yeah, in the mixer until it's all together. Uh-huh, which then, is really simple, really, when you think about it. It's not it's, that scary. It's, no, no, not at all. So you put the water at the end, so until it comes all together, and then you get this. Voila! So, you yeah, get that, this. That's beautiful. So it should come out like that. Okay. This you have to roll it. Um, and you chill it for a while before you roll it. Not no. even. Look, you can use then, it right away. Oh my gosh! That's the cool thing about the kids is like yeah. you're very hungry, you can eat it right away. Magic. Here's your quiche tin. You put the dough in and you pricked it. Yes, I pricked it with the fork. Yeah so it doesn't nice. do any bubble. Yep. You put this 15 minutes in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit. Here we have 400 gram of creme fraiche, 400 gram of milk, yeah. organic milk, the eggs, okay. four yolks and four eggs. And we're gonna start mixing all of that together. We're gonna put three gram of pepper, mm -hmm. black pepper, three gram of salt. Okay. We're gonna start mixing all of that. I actually like made up a new recipe okay. for you guys, so it's easy to do at home. Thank you, that's so sweet. And Lou said if you make this quiche, he wants you to tag him in a photo. Yes, please. He wants to see your quiche. I see a little Dijon, what's happening here? This is what we're this gonna do secret. right now. We're gonna put it in the bottom of the crust, right here. Good trick. It's about like two or three spoon. We're gonna put everything inside. So I'm gonna put Gruyere. So this is about a hundred gram. And we're gonna put the tomato all around. Nice. And we're gonna put the thyme. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 400. Oh, okay, pretty 400. high, yeah. Yeah, pretty high. My favorite part, we get to taste. <laughs> the quiche, the quiche was so, the way you made it seem like this is so easy and we all can do it and it looks beautiful. Thank you. And now we get to taste. Lou said, why are you getting a fork? You just pick it up and eat it. That's right. It is so, you know, it almost doesn't taste like eggs because you have so many yummy things in there. Dijon on the crust is where it's at. Yeah. And your crust, the dough is so good. Mm. Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Uh, au revoir. Au revoir. Those croissants were absolute perfection. It is amazing that Lou learned his craft on YouTube of all places. What a great guy. And I cannot wait to take the whole family back for more croissants. Coming up, I'm making a delicious roast chicken with potatoes in a cast iron skillet. Plus, I happen to love a good wedge salad, so I'm showing you how I put my version together. And baby Theo and I are gonna give you a quick tour of our renovated kitchen. That's coming up. It is a comforting dish that will please any crowd. I'm making roasted chicken and potatoes in a cast iron skillet. And oh, does it smell good. Potatoes. Who loves potatoes? I love potatoes. So we're gonna do a little chicken dish. Potatoes. Easy chicken dish. This could definitely be a weeknight meal, I think, where uh, you just take a skillet, all in one pot, I'm gonna cook up some chicken thighs, skin on so they're nice and juicy. I've got little baby potatoes, careful Levi. And okay. when it's all done, I'm gonna take out the chicken and make a nice little sauce with some uh, Dijon mustard and heavy cream. I want to eat this. First thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna cut these potatoes, but actually if you can find the little baby round ones, those are better because you don't even have to cut them. You just throw them in the pan. But these were a little bigger than I wanted. That's okay. Now, the other thing I'm gonna to add to our potatoes, the thing about garlic is it if you chop it up too fine, it'll burn. What I'm gonna do is just... You don't want to burn garlic. You don't want burnt garlic. I'm just gonna put in whole cloves, or they'll have a less of a chance to burn. I can't keep up, Levi. Do you like chicken this week or no? Yeah. Oh, you do? I okay. do like chicken. Okay, because it, it's been changing from week to week. 
melted butter. I'm gonna reserve some for the chicken. A little bit of olive oil because butter burns, so you don't want the butter to burn. Stir it around for me, Levi. Please. Good fat pinch of salt because potatoes need lots of salt. And can you crack some pepper for me? How much do I need to put? Uh, you can do a lot. Potatoes, done. On to the chicken. So here I have chicken leg quarters, which kind of remind me of the bistro kind of feel because that's the way they serve chicken in a French bistro. So find those with skin on, it'll keep it nice and moist with the skin. And the other thing is this is faster than cooking a whole chicken. I patted it dry, you want it to brown nicely. I'm gonna hit it with a good amount of salt. Back to the pepper. Now what I'm gonna do, Levi, is I'm gonna go to the skillet and brown these off a little and then put it in the oven. Time to brown up the chicken. The cast iron is smoking hot, like literally smoking hot. Drizzle of olive oil and then that leftover butter. Skin side down to the flip side. More salt, pepper. And now we just wanna get it brown, the skin a little bit. We're gonna cook it in the oven. So a couple of minutes, I'll flip it. Let's see, we got a nice, yeah. We rendered some of the fat from the skin. Turn it off, now to that. I'm gonna tuck our potatoes in. You don't wanna crowd the pan too much. Try to get as many as you can though. I have some thyme, fresh thyme, and tarragon. And tarragon is a very, I think of it as kind of a French herb. It's a little anise licorice kind of a vibe. I never cook with tarragon, but I happened to see it at the store and I thought, why not? Just throw it in. Tuck it in there. Some lemon zest. That looks pretty, doesn't it? And it's not even cooked yet. In it goes. And the house can smell so good. It smells so good in the house. Chicken and potatoes and garlic wafting through. Yes. That looks and smells, honestly, it kind of smells a little like Thanksgiving in here. Oh, the skin is so crispy, yes. I'm gonna take all of this out and put it on a platter. And the herbs got, you know, brown and crispy. So what I would do is just omit those. And then I'm gonna turn on my skillet again. These lovely golden potatoes. Ooh. And garlic, just sprinkle around. Pan back on and I'm gonna make a quick sauce. So I have some Dijon mustard, a nice fat dollop. You want to get all the bits. A little bit of heavy cream. And there you have it. Creamy mustard sauce. Ooh, chicken is done. Doesn't it smell good in here? The sauce. You want a leg? The sauce, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon. Levi, here's what's happening. Get a load of this beauty. Some more fresh herbs. And dinner is ready. Mm. Oh man, it's so yummy. Those potatoes are divine. How are you gonna eat it? Like pick it up or? Oh my goodness, that's yummy. That With the scoff, you taste that tarragon, which is a little, it's got that little licorice flavor, the mustard, the lemon, and those potatoes. I need to cut this. My favorite. Okay, that one is a slam dunk with the family and it makes an impressive dinner party entree as well. For the recipe, check out our Instagram page at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, I'm showing you how I serve up my version of a wedge salad. Plus, we're making some serious progress with our home reno project. Baby Theo and I are gonna show off the kitchen coming up next. This one is a classic, simple salad, and you can serve it on its own, or it would be a great side dish to my roasted chicken. Take a look. Who 
doesn't love a wedge salad? A big iceberg wedge salad with bacon and blue cheese dressing. It's really one of the only times I like blue cheese dressing, that and wings. So here's a big head of iceberg, and I happen to love iceberg lettuce. I know it's not the, you know, cool lettuce, but I really love it. Instead of a wedge, maybe I'll just do this. I might just do like little slices of iceberg. Why not? This is a jumbo head of iceberg, by the way. However you want to do it. You could do wedges, you could do slices, but I got a big platter. And this I think would be great with like if you're serving steak or chicken. I have a beautiful heirloom tomato, which heirloom tomatoes are still really good. And I think, I don't know, I might just cut it into these thick, gorgeous slices. Look at that, so beautiful, these tomatoes. And just kind of arrange them on the side. And then I have these really cute little cherry tomatoes. So I might have some of these. Just sprinkle them around. Just add those there. To our blue cheese dressing, it's so easy to make homemade dressing. It's the only thing I do nowadays. I don't buy dressing anymore. I really don't. I try to make it. That way you know what's in it. It's better for you. So mayo, yogurt or sour cream, but I'm gonna use Labney. A splash of milk because you wanna thin it out so you can pour it. I also like a splash of red wine vinegar to give it a little tang. So you wanna thin that out. Some salt, but blue cheese is really salty. So just a pinch, some black pepper, and that's it. Now you crumble in the blue cheese and you're done. You've got blue cheese dressing. So here is some lovely blue cheese. I bought a wedge and basically, I like that better than the crumbles. So I would just get a wedge of blue cheese, you chunk it up and you put it in. And it's that easy to make blue cheese dressing. Mix that in. You wanna keep it chunky, so just break it up a little bit. Now you could be saying, I don't like blue cheese. Then you could do ranch. You could make a homemade ranch. The thing you must have on a wedge salad is crispy bacon. And I did it in the air fryer, which I'm so excited about. Look how crispy that is. Nice, big chunks of bacon. Bacon, 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 bacon. We're not cheaping out on the bacon. And here we go. Oh yeah, blue cheese chunks. Oh, I'm gonna put a little bit over here on the tomatoes too. And just because, I think I'll add, just so you know that it's blue cheese, a few crumbles on top. Look at this salad, this is a meal. Serve this along with a steak, a piece of chicken, and there you go. Your steakhouse wedge salad. Oh my goodness, anything with blue cheese and bacon is a winner, and that dressing takes things to a whole other level. Okay guys, onto our home reno. As you know, we've been working on this house for what seems like an eternity. And while I can't say we're completely done, we have made some real progress in the last several months. Here's a look at how far our kitchen has come. Theo, you wanna give a tour of the kitchen? Yay, the kitchen's done. So this was a labor of love. This took quite a while. And we were, you know, trying to make do with half the kitchen and no sink for a little while. And we were washing dishes in the bathroom. It was quite the production. But the first place we started was back in this back part of the kitchen, which, so that was initially a sunroom or a breakfast nook. And I thought, well, what I could really get the most use out of is a full pantry. So that's what I decided to do with this room back here. I did floor to ceiling um, cabinetry so I could store all my dry goods and all my pots and bowls and you name it. And then this area in the back is so great for when I have get togethers or parties for Thanksgiving. I had all of the dishes spread out on that long run of cabinets back there. When I have a mess, in this part of the kitchen, I'll sometimes go back there and shove stuff back there where no one can see it. So it really is so useful. I get so much use out of it. 
And then I also did a little coffee bar back there so we can have our coffee in the morning and that sort of thing. The other thing we decided to do initially, we had stained the cabinet tree like a light wood and it all just was too blah. So Ari and I decided, let's stain it black. And then we stained it black and it was too black, so we put a little bit of a grayish blue over it. So now it takes on, sometimes you look at it, it looks black, sometimes it looks blue, but we're, we're happy with it. And, um, and the other thing that we really were excited about was when we picked out our stove. It's really beautiful. It's this creamy white color, and I just, I just love it. I think it's so pretty. The other thing that I really wanted to do is bring this up behind as a backsplash and have a little marble shelf where I can put tchotchkes. I really wanted, since it's a very open floor plan kind of a house, is an island where people can congregate, kids can sit, friends can hang out and have a glass of wine. <laughs> and then also be able to have, you know, six people around the, the island and just have a lot of room to spread out and cook and, and make memories, all that good stuff. I'm so happy with the way the kitchen turned out and I cannot wait for the rest of the house to be done and decorated so I can show that to you as well. Well, that does it for us and we'll see you guys next time. We put our chicken. Ah! <laughs> Try not to drop it. Oh. 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 My bone fell out. Oh man. Boys chicken. I'm gonna make a roasted chicken and potatoes all in one skillet. No. Okay. <laughs> so crisp, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm.